Hey everybody, Robbie with Robbie's Reptiles. Today we're going to be going over what I think might be the most effective and efficient way of housing your crested geckos if you are a breeder like I am. Not only is it maximizing the effectiveness and the efficiency of feeding and cleaning, while also sacrificing nothing in terms of husbandry. While this isn't some super crazy awesome bioactive eight fucking ecosystem type enclosure, this also isn't the other side of the spectrum being a couple of egg crates and a single vine and calling it a day. I think this strikes the perfect balance between the two of maximum efficiency, cleanliness when you feed and clean and spray, but also I think it maximizes the amount of climbing space that the crested gecko can have, it maximizes the amount of foliage they can have, so you're essentially getting the best of both worlds and sacrificing nothing with this setup. Let's go ahead and break down how we've made this the most efficient way of keeping crested geckos. So in here is, let me go, let me try to grab her. So in here is my super soft breeding female. She's one of my favorites and she's a really big girl too at about 65 grams. Uh, she just laid some eggs so she's a little thin. With this enclosure, the goal was to strive for something that was the most efficient without compromising at all their ability to climb, hide, and perform their natural behaviors. So what we have here are pool noodles. And of course, everyone's heard of pool noodles. Oh, and then, you know, so Stick made that video talking about how he had one suffocate in one. When you're keeping them like that, they are able to climb inside, but luckily you can even get some irrigation insulation that has a really, really large diameter. That's what she, and then they're not going to have a chance of suffocating. However, we have pool noodles that do not have a hole. Now you may be wondering where I got these pool noodles from. Hilariously, I got them from a site called oodlesofnoodles.com. I think I was able to get 75-ish of these solid noodles for about $135. And I know that sounds pretty steep. I thought it was too, but each one is about four or five feet long. So you're actually able to get one noodle and that will be able to cover two and a half enclosures. So when you get 75 of them, that can cover like 7,000. However, the problem that I kept coming across was cleaning. Cleaning was the biggest pain in my rear end and I needed to come up with a way to make it as simple as possible. And I think that I have. So with this setup, you might be wondering why there isn't really anything on the floor. The only thing that's on the floor is her lay box, which we have with some moist vermiculite inside. Here is the reason that I wanted to set up like this. Absolutely no decorations on the ground. Cleaning day is as simple as grabbing the paper towels and taking it out, getting the new sheet, and then sliding underneath. You could have it in a much more efficient setup so that there's not even the decorations touching the ground. You're able to slide out your old dirty paper towels and slide in your new clean paper towels in record time. So this essentially is a workaround for having to take out all of your decorations that are resting on the ground or something, pinned up against the wall, then take out all the leaves, and then clean it, and then put all the paper towel down, and then put the decorations back. Hopefully you don't mess it up so any of them slide and fall around. This is a way that you have nothing touching the ground, so you can just grab the paper towels, pull it out, put the new ones back in. It's super efficient and clean. Another little life hack, a little Linus tech tip for you. Because these don't have a hole in them, you can actually use something called a hole saw and then cut a perfect diameter in to put these gecko dishes right into that hole. So now we're able to put the gecko dish on this ledge so that they can't knock it over very easily. Cause we've all had that moment where we freshly feed all of our geckos only to watch them come over and just completely tip it over and ruin our day. And then we have to re-clean and everything like that. So this is just a preventative for that. So not only are we making this more efficient for cleaning, we're making this better for feeding as well. I have all of my adult enclosures lined up just like this now, and it's so efficient and it's so fast now when it comes to feeding and cleaning. It's a life changer. Now I get asked all the live long day, Robbie, where do you get your gecko tubs? And these are from the container store. So these tubs that are in view right now are the size that I use for my 15 to 30 gram juvenile slash young adults. When they get to proper breeding size and weight, they're upgraded into these tubs, which are right here. So these tubs right here are what I use for adults. These are 12 feet wide, 18 feet long, and 12 feet high. So they're the exact same size as a usual recommended adult exoterra, the only difference being that they're horizontal rather than vertical. So the reason that I use all of these is because they individually stack on top of each other. So there's no need for me to build a rack system. There's no need for me to buy a bunch of tubs and then have to take on and off all the lids of everything. These are all completely contained, self-enclosed, and stackable tubs. It essentially just maximizes my efficiency. You guys might have a system that works for you. This is the system that works for me. 
This size of tubs is 18 feet long, eight feet tall, and 12 feet wide, I believe. So the only difference is that it's horizontal. You make that up by giving them plenty of things to climb on. So you might be asking why these instead of a rack system or using Exoterra glass aquariums. Well, the glass doesn't actually keep in the humidity very well. The top of it is actually made of screen. So all of your humidity is immediately evaporated. With these, you can drill a couple of holes or you can use a soldering iron to burn a couple of holes into them. They hold the humidity very well for at least two or three days and they all are self-stacking. With Exoterra's, you would have to have a whole shelf system, and then you wouldn't even be able to maximize space vertically. You would have to maximize it horizontally. Another interesting thing that I've noticed is because of people wanting to keep them in these vertical enclosures, we've actually started to see a rise, almost an epidemic, if you will, of crested geckos that have something called floppy tail syndrome, which we'll go into that in another video, but essentially what happens is a gecko falls asleep vertical constantly because they have very little horizontal climbing area, so they end up sleeping vertically. So when they're sleeping like this, their tails will just flop down like this, and eventually it gives them a permanent kink in their tail. This is not a genetic issue at all, it is an issue from using very vertical enclosures. I've found that not a single one of my crested geckos has ever developed floppy tail syndrome, and I keep them in these horizontal bins. The reason I keep them in these bins is because of the efficiency, but also it still is the same recommended size for an adult crested gecko. I usually don't keep more than three adults in a tub at a time when it comes to breeding season, but I always give the females their own big enclosure once they're up to breeding weight. Then if I deem it necessary, I'll actually put them into one of these smaller tubs just so that they have less distractions and then they focus more on getting their weight back up and eating properly. Because, you know, after a breeding season, a female is pretty tired, their calcium is depleted, and you want them to put that weight back on. So that's why I have these enclosures. I have so many of them because they're the perfect size for not only juvenile and young adults, but they're perfect for when you're trying to get a female or a male to start putting that size back on. It's still the same length. It's a little shorter. Give them the same amount of surface area to climb on and give them plenty of food. Then they'll be able to put their weight back on. And then once they've put on a little bit more weight, I graduate them back to their proper adult enclosures. So I went ahead and got these solid noodles and I also saw that they had an option to buy um, wholesale discarded pool noodles. I did go ahead and buy the other option that they had of the discarded pool noodles. I ended up getting a box of 100 perfectly normal, not broken or cut or ruined in any way, blue pool noodles. So I'm assuming that they just had a bunch of noodles that they wanted to sell and no one was buying, uh, unless it was an oversight on their part, but hey, I won in the end, so I'm happy. The solid black ones are really great because they are less bendy than ones that have holes in them because of physics. Also, if you guys have seen so six videos about never using pool noodles, this is a perfect way to just avoid that problem entirely. You, now there's zero chance of your gecko crawling inside and suffocating because there's no hole. But if you still want to use the pool noodles in this way, which I'm sure a lot of us do, you can get irrigation piping insulation and that you can get the really big gauge size so then there's not that risk of your gecko suffocating either. This is an example of how I keep my hatchlings. The way that I usually do this is I use this material that is used for lining gutters in a house. You can either turn it into a circle like it is here, or you can leave it as a half circle. It gives the gecko plenty of room to climb, and you don't have to worry about it molding like cork bark. You won't have to really clean it like pool noodles because when they poop on it, it just falls right through onto the paper towel. And then of course we have some of the leaves. Usually I use the ones that have like a little cup on the end of them. They're at Hobby Lobby. I know that they're somewhere. As we all know, hatchlings aren't exactly the brightest. They're still trying to figure out how life really works. So I see a lot of people make the big mistake of giving their hatchlings this giant enclosure with so much stuff to do. And the problem is that a lot of the times your baby crested gecko will actually die because it's so dumb. It's not able to find the food. It's too busy exploring and figuring out its whole environment. You need to have your crested gecko hatchlings in a very simple setup like so, just so that they can pack on that weight once they're about 10 grams, then you can go ahead and give them a bigger enclosure and let them grow into it. But I can't strongly recommend enough to keep them in a really small, about a six quart Sterilite tub like this when they're just hatchlings. 